What a season this has been so far from breakouts of our young guys. Eklund leading the way in points as he, we've been kind of waiting on him to do. You know, we got him that eight point something mil deal and uh, it was essentially paying him for the player we believed he was going to be. Well, now he is that player and uh, it's paying off and hopefully he can string it together year after he is performing more like a playmaker still got you know not not a pure playmaker of course he's still going to be a 20 goal guy and you know that's what you want out of a guy like this it's it's uh very very good for us and growth seems to be doing okay Gaucher, he's kind of kind of stagnated a bit but hopefully maybe playing him in his role get him some things here and there but everyone else i mean ramirez happy both the happy bullens looking solid uh even tabernacolo's growing a little bit so we obviously want all that to continue here. As for, <laughs> yeah, Vlasic's about done. He's still got the uh, decent defensive awareness, so we're putting him in there. But this is his final year. I'm letting him play it out here. I didn't want to demote the guy. <laughs> because he's still actually serviceable. And, you know, he's a plus 18, 10 points, only two penalty minutes. He's, uh, him and Connor Clifton aren't doing too bad together, man. But, yeah, this uh, will be uh, Vlac it's Vlasic's final year in teal so we're here at the trade deadline and what are we gonna do huh what are we gonna do we're gonna make a couple trades probably at least to maybe fill, actually actually i think i was maxed out on picks no we can grab one more i think did i count that right one two yes i did um oh yeah that's right i grabbed the first one we could still grab a second that's right, we grab the first from next year, which we're hoping out of Dallas, maybe they struggle. Who knows if they will? It, it's, again, it's kind of a lottery st style uh, thing going on, but that's that's how we do. So, I mean, we can grab a second. That wouldn't be too bad. Or, I don't know. What do we got to even give up here? I don't really think we have a whole heck of a lot. I, I don't know if I'm even selling anything, especially off the main roster, because we don't really have anything to sell. You don't, I don't give up Couture. At least until, not until his last final, or final year. And even then, it's, it's going to be hard to give up the captain like that. And <laughs> See, I, I got to make these business decisions when I got freaking personal connections with these guys. Should have followed Billy Bean's advice. <laughs> but uh, anyway. Yeah, so there's really... I'm looking. These are, these are our main guys. There's no one here that I really give up. We're holding on to Bjorkstrand. We got him extended. We're holding on to him. Absolutely, until, you know, and even after, because we don't we don't know what's going to happen. We're still going to be, like, what what what's our top six going to look like? We're going to have Eklund, Bjorkstrand, Happy Boolin, Happy Boolin, uh, Balsers, and uh, either Tabernacolo or Gaucher. So, I mean, yeah, eventually someone from here will have to, you know, be gone, but it's not a rush. And, you know, Bjorkstrand, maybe you play him on the even on the third line or something like that i mean balser same kind of he's his contract's up next year now again we do need the playmakers but you know maybe to make room that he's he's the guy to go i'm, I'm so so happy with how balsers has done here it's been it's been awesome he is kind of you know taking more of a, a smaller role he'll probably keep declining in points he's not gonna hit 60 again he'll hit 50 i don't even know if he'll hit the same amount he hit uh last season but yeah, he's going to probably slowly get phased out, in which case he will eventually lose that stack growth. So uh, he'll, <laughs> he won't get another long-term contract. That is for certain. So who knows? Who knows really what the plan is? Cause, I mean, we got Ling coming up, right? So pretty much when Balser's contract's up, he might be getting replaced internally. Also McKenzie, 81 now. He's delisted his depth. He's got solid, solid build to him. Yeah, I mean, things are things are looking pretty good. We're going to have a lot of young guns kind of cracking the lineup. So Couture leaving, Balser's leaving, all that's fine. Eventually, Bjorkstrand will leave. Um, he actually might just get pushed out before then even. <laughs> well, that's gone, but hey, we still got him to a decent extension. So it won't really be an issue. So, all right, what the hell? We do have an elite goalie. But we drafted him just this past year. We don't have to trade him right now. We can. I mean, there's nothing that says we can't. We can absolutely trade him right now. 
There's no real reason for us to hold on to him. We got Goudreau. We have Benoit. <laughs> He's worrying me a bit with his growth, but I, I still think he'll be fine. If he gets to those mid-80s, you know, it, it should be okay, right? So, hopefully he still does that. Maybe we don't quite give him up yet, although waiting for another prospect at this point, we can't do it. We'll have to pursue a goal. To, I mean, we still have Hill. <laughs> he's, he's only 29, right? So, hey, maybe if Benoit doesn't work out, Hill's the guy. Who knows? But, uh, yeah, I guess we can give up Burmistrov. Anyone want him? Yeah, we got a couple guys. Vegas wants him. Uh, Toronto, whoa, they want him. They have a, they're going to have a good second. This is what we should target. Absolutely. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. That's near perfect as it is. That is near perfect as it is. Let's grab a little something next to That would be nine picks. So let's go for something probably next year. Doubt we get a three. Oof. It's actually really close to getting that three for next year. Which could help us target a medium elite, which again, could be trade value. <laughs> they want Giovanni Smith. Ah, you can't have him. He's too expensive. Can't afford the man. Uh, damn. Oh, wait, wait, wait. There was one other. Who was that? Col nope. <laughs> yeah, so they kind of want... Uh... And unfortunately, I don't really have any junk unsigned guys, so I guess it'll have to be one of those other goalies. So let's try with park the backup in there because he's has to be moved this year not quite all right well throwing ragnarsson as well it'll probably take both of them i have to trade park i can't really trade him for anything else so i'm just gonna throw him in the steel try to push that jesus try to push that across as i was saying hmm all right well on the flip side give me a sec let me take another gander here at our free agency class let's see or, oh, oh, sorry. So someone made a comment like, hey, check on the franchise guy from Slovakia. I'm like, oh, yeah, where'd he get drafted? Oh, he's right here. <laughs> here we are. So he's a goal-scoring leadership ability pro release. So, I mean, I'm sure we'll take more look at him when he gets drafted too, but he's looking like an absolute stud. Similar side of Michel Goulet. Oof, he likes crash the net. Interesting. I, I, I would avoid him, but hey, whoever gets him is going to be still have a franchise sniper. I'm not a big fan of the crash the net uh skills because you you'll never find a coach with a crash of that in the top six that's just legit how it is but uh yeah so here's two guys around the three mark you know that's why i'm thinking maybe i, should, I maybe i could s slide in there get a three for this year instead and if i have to trade a pick back so be it i was just checking on that and see where those guys were i think that's the play right here just to get a three instead so let's go ahead and do that they who the hell was it Oh, yeah, the goaltender. Uh, Burmistrov, and then we'll throw in... I'll throw in Park and then maybe try a pick, like a 7. Maybe I don't have to get the fringe star yet. Jeez. Oh, I mean, that's not a bad goaltender tandem by any means. Uh, that's a weird... Yeah. All right. So we want... Ah, you sons of bitches. That was is going to be near perfect. Son of a bitch. Okay, let's... Let's keep the goaltender. See if anyone else wants him. God damn it. I, I need... Okay. Blues want him. Do you guys have your three? Nope. And you don't want to give up your two. Oh, dude. Toronto. Why you got to do that? Why you got to be so close yet? So God damn it. I swear. Every time people are missing twos or threes. I, we could get it from New York. But they're a little bit on the... I would I'd try to find a team slightly. How about Nashville? <sighs> maybe. Even though they don't want to give it up, maybe. Mm, probably not, dude. Alright, we'll throw in probably these two guys still. Yeah, that's not not even looking as close as the other one. Is it? Throw in the seven as well. Because that would be eight, nine, yeah. See what they say to this. I doubt it. Yeah, no. Nah, damn it. Because it's because they don't want to give these up. It makes sense. If you know Toronto's in the one position, of course they don't have their goddamn three. All right. Well, this is on the block, but maybe, maybe just maybe because it's on the block. But and they don't want anything but our first. Interesting. I don't think know if I've ever seen a team not wanting any of these picks. All they want are firsts. That's crazy. Nope. Dallas? 
This is... They don't... <laughs> they're third? Oh, yeah, we picked up their third. Ha! <laughs> Alright. Alright, I'm still looking... <sighs> I got Edmonton's third. Well, the latest the third can be is 96. So, I mean, we have an 88 and uh, it's still... We would have to maybe maneuver. I mean, it's it's possible to get that. I'm thinking of Edmonton's. They're very good, so that's why I was thinking of that pick. It'll be che it would be cheaper. Chicago's the second will be good. I mean, it's, it's we could do this, but I'd still rather find try to find a tiny bit better fit with someone who wants Burnley Straw, but that just might not be in the cards here. Yeah, legit. The best fit was Toronto, and they unfortunately do not have their own third. Who has their third? I'm not gonna find it. Ah, Toronto, Toronto. Son of a bitch. I mean, I could always trade for the third. I just wanted to pick it up here in the same move. So alternatively, I mean, we could still go for New York. At least the seconds, the guys we had pinned it, or looking at in the seconds were probably looking like closer to the late 40s, 50s. So it wouldn't be out of the realm of... I mean, this would still be good. We'd still have to give a pick, but maybe we wouldn't have to give a Bragnerson in this. So that's kind of what I'm thinking. Let's do that. Let's do Burmy Straw Park and a 7th for a 2 and a 3 from New York. Swing the value just a touch. Okay, let's throw Ragnarsson back in there. And that should do it, right? No, because you don't want my pick. Okay. How about a 6 instead? Be much easier if you wanted my late picks. Alright, well they wanted a 6 instead of a 7. Still a good trade. So we're going to have a 1st, 2 seconds, 2 three threes actually. Three threes and a four, five, and a seven for this year. That'll be good. Perfect. Seven, eight, nine here. All right. So there we go. So not the greatest second, but we could always shift it up. And, hey, they might miss the playoffs and it could still be in a good location. At least I'm sure. I'm pretty sure that some of the guys in the second. Heh <laughs> Oh, I don't even have them looked at. Okay, well, yeah, who knows? <laughs> well, we got multiple seconds, so we can get something, right? All right. Maybe I was thinking of, like, the top fours or the top sixes that we're kind of already figured out there. Still an obvious possibility to get some low elites around that range in the second. We'll just have to do a bit more scouting. I already checked the extensions, didn't I? And they're still kind of, yeah, pretty sure... Yeah, so I think we're going to go have to do sort of midterm uh, with Knyazev here. Which, again, I'm not opposed to. This is uh, 4.8 for four years. I think that would be pretty good for him. Another four years at that price. Let's do that for Knyazev. Merkley. Ugh. I have to wait on him. That's just way, way too much. If we liked our kind of fourth line, I, well, I'm not going to put any prospects into that fourth line. So, I mean, I could keep a guy like Paul around. Yeah, he wants a much, much better deal. So, go for it, actually. Let's do that right there. Merkley, still like him as a depth piece. He's still not going to want depth money, but we can still afford him at non-depth. And he's honestly worth it with what he does when we put him into that top six. So, yeah. Let's do two years. We won't run into issues. All right, Killoran's not going to come back. He's declining. Uh, Kanijov. Mm, sure. I like you, so I'll give you two-way. Yeah, Vlasic doesn't want an extension. <laughs> All right, so that's that. That should be everything. So that's our that's our trade deadline right here. Let's finish this year off. And uh, see how we do in the playoffs. We got Paul, Knizhov, uh, Merkley rejected, actually. All right, stop that real quick. I must have passed the deadline. So we'll see if any uh, major trades get made. No. Interesting. 
There haven't been a whole lot of blockbuster trades being made in this, have there? Very curious. Um, Merkley. Why the heck didn't he want that deal? Maybe because I gave him an extra year or something. Who knows? Oh, he just changed. What the? F he just changed his asking price. <laughs> Screw you. Maybe Merkley did. Nope. Well, other well, both Merkleys are playing hardball right now, so I'll hold off on that. Whatever. I get him back some other time. Don't need to worry about him. He's not a major, major piece. Let's just finish this year off. Focus on the task at hand. Stassi on waivers? Nah. Not with two years left. Couture is back. Yeah, I mean, look what Merkley's done. 12 points and 16 games played. <laughs> Five goals, man. He's solid. Cooch goes back in there. Everywhere. All right, good. We continue on. Got shut out twice in a row. I don't like that. All right, we'll do some scouting real quick. All right, continuing on here. And uh, not the greatest tail end of the season I've ever seen. Having some trouble uh, picking up some wins here as the game get games get tougher. But we still got the first in the division. We have already clinched, so that's at least good. 50 win season. I don't like that we're giving up so many goals. Oof, 51, 25, and 6. Yeah, a lot of those games at the end where we score 4 and still lose. I'm not a fan of those type of games. Taking on Vancouver here in the first round. Let's see what happens there. We will have home ice advantage. Let's see how the team did overall. We're going to see... Oof, Eklund wasn't even point per game at the end of this year. Or actually, yeah, he missed some time with injury. He might have been. Yeah, goals against kept going up. Goals for... Went down a bit, but it was still solid over 3. But yeah... Barely won the division. Barely. Power play just wasn't good enough. Well, I don't know. Maybe they really kind of made the power play percentage make a bit more sense this 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 year. Who knows? Penalty kill wasn't great either. I guess we could see how we uh, actually stack up here. In goals four. Yeah, we were fourth in goals four. All right. Not too bad. Goals against. Um, in the top 10. So again, not bad. How about power play? Yeah, okay, yeah. More middle of the pack in the power play. But less teams over 20% than there was in NHL 21. So, okay. Penalty kill. Yeah, not going to be anywhere close. Okay. So, yeah, the, the defensive aspects of the game we're a little bit lax on. But with a young team, that can be expected at times. However, we were hoping with our veterans and other stuff like that that we had kind of improved that. And at Hill... My, his number's probably slacked off. So, yeah, Eklund was still point per game. Couture just under. They both missed time with injury. Fucking Mer man, Merkley had a career year. He actually may be in Norris contention. Uh, Bjorkstrand, 30 goals, 63 points. Bolster, 61 points. Habby Boulin and Habby Boulin both had 27 goals. But uh, Maxime had three more points than Gustavs. And Maxime's younger, so he gets a little brother. Gets the bragging rights for this season. Gaucher, 52. So, at least they all hit 50 points. Tabernacolo, almost almost at 50 points 48 20 goals though so not a bad rookie year Ooh, we jumped up to 83 love to see it ramirez 43 points up to 82 now 20 goal rookie year again all of all of our young guns did very well yeah they all did they all did solid defensively yeah i mean merkley what a a breakout year for him might, might even get some stack growth so yeah we might have to be forced to pay extra for him i was hoping we to not but Maybe I uh, played it a little too close. I just, you know, we hadn't had that breakout breakout year yet, but this is the time that those defensemen can break out. They're hitting them when they hit those mid twenties, and well, he did sixty-seven points plus sixty-seven again. Could be in Norris contention. We'll have to see. And uh, yeah, all right. Well, you know, it's not bad. Both goals with a nine ten. It's not bad. Forty wins for Hill. I mean, it's still pretty good, but yeah, they did slack off. But again, nine ten is respectable. Definitely, definitely respectable. And yeah, we had three rookies of Maxime, Vincerino, and Reed. All right, well, let's see how we stacked up to the rest of the league here. Connor McDavid, there we go. <laughs> 105 points. His first time, I think, in this franchise mode. And guess who's right behind him? 104 for a dry saddle. And uh, Zegers, they still don't have his picture. Are you kidding me? Got 97 points. Get his picture in there. The man is a goddamn gem. 
He scored the dish again. Or didn't score. He, he set up the dish again for Sonny Milano, who apparently was extremely misused under Tortorella. Go figure. A skilled guy misused under Tortorella. Never heard that before. All right. Goal leader. Also McDavid. 54. Wow, he's the only guy to hit 50 goals? Woof. Looks like our members are needed here. <laughs> Hurry up, guys. Get up there. Start scoring. Uh, 74 assists for Jack Hughes, the assist leader. How about, oh, he had zero game winners out of those 14? Rip. Wow, Stamkos, 13 game winners out of 46. I'm just going to give him the most clutch award. Damn. Power play goal leader, 20 for Kucherov. Out of, out of 47 goals, 20 of them were on the power play. Uh, 30 max points, too. He had the most points, too. 35 points on the power play. Uh, six shorties for Couturier. Eight shorthanded points for Couturier. And could be in that Selkie race once again, as we will see. O'Reilly, maybe, eh, not enough face-offs. Pedersen, definitely a mention at least. Maybe even Dude Sweet, and you're one, you're one of those. Oh, wow. What the hell? You weren't even, I don't even think you're supposed to be one of those crazy uh, <laughs> Selkie candidates, but you might be developing into that. Good Lord, are you good. Yeah, Kachuria looking kind of like the front runner so far. Mm, Barkov's up there. Maybe Stamkos a bit, even though the faceoff's 800 less than anyone else. Or most other guys. Interesting. Yeah, the Selkie races aren't as crazy as they were. Okay, they're Drew even. Okay. Flyers. Alrighty. Sydney Crosby right there, too. Let's check. Uh, oops, why did I. No, oh, whatever. Like five games is fine. Uh, so he's in contention, but probably not going to win it. I would say it's going to go to Quinn Hughes. Eh, this is going to be weird. Makar is really up there, but I think that point differential is too big. I think it could go to Quinn Hughes here. I'd be surprised if it went to Merkley. I don't think it'll go to Provorov because the game loves its plus minus. So I think Hughes is going to come up with this. He's got 12 more points than Makar. I don't think he's close enough. So I think another, uh, another Norris for Hughes here. How about goaltenders? Uh, Sorokin on the Penguins with uh, incredibly good stats. Who the hell is this guy? Ustamenko. What's up with the Rangers? Oh, fuck off. Uh, Matt Murray. Vasilevsky. I mean, good for him, but, like, seriously, fuck off game. Seriously. 78 overall goaltender. If you don't watch, he, he's going to get stat growth. I mean, he better. Oh, God. <laughs> he's not extended. Good luck. Who's going to hit free agency and ask for a, a bunch? Vasilevsky, not a bad year, but I think he got to just hand it to Sorokin and Sorokin only. He, it wasn't a crazy good record. Uh, you Maybe argument for Murray, but that goes against his soul so different. Like, yeah, he's got a negative record and all that, but I think it's Sorokin on his own. What the hell? Tell me this game makes sense. Again, I, I know. People always tell me, hey, well, goalies can seemingly come out of nowhere. You don't have those. You know, they come out of nowhere by actually growing into it. Right? Like, we don't know p people's overalls in real life. <laughs> here's here's the thing. Stats should be reflected of performance. And uh, it's just weird, man. Goalies have always kind of been weird. And fuck off. Uh, hey! Two guys in the top. We love to see it. Sorry, Uncle Skoden. You did your best. Yeah, you'll be fine. 84 overall now, 22. Yay. You're making it. You're making it to that 86, 87 mark for sure. Ramirez. Wow, we had <laughs> Billy Hacker. Look at all the uh, oh, Hillis as well in there. Look at all the membership uh, debuts this year. All the rookies. But it was R2 that went. It wasn't even a member. It was Maxime Khabibulin with 56 points. Taking home that Calder. 27 goals as well. And he beat all you guys. As goals, assists, and points. Let's go. All right, well, this is a chance for a rookie to freaking stand out. Uh, Finneganoff? He's the, he'd be the best one. I mean, you can make a pretty firm argument that he, he should win that Calder. And I don't know how far off you'd be. He's 31 wins, 9-11 save percentage, and a 2-6-6 GAA. When you think about it, who's the guy we're giving the... Uh, 
Thing two, he didn't even, he had like a 916, what the hell? 914, 915, 916, like it's, Demko had a 920, but he only played 40 games. Yeah, the top goalie was a 916, man. I would give the Calder to the goaltender, <laughs> but they're not gonna. Even though he's only 22, I don't think they're gonna do it. But damn, what a season for that goaltender. For a fan again off. Bringing glory back to that name. Hits. Uh, Erickson Eck had 200. All right, Erickson Eck hits. Uh, not a whole lot of fights besides for Don't Jab Me Bertuzzi. Ear check. Billy Hacker with some fight with some fights. You like to see it. All right. So there we are. And here is your playoff tree for this year. The Jets in the wild, the Avs and the Ducks, the Oilers in Vegas, and then us against the Canucks. And you got the Caps and the Devils, the Canes and the Flyers, Florida and Boston, and that Tampa Bay and Buffalo. Goddamn Florida teams. We have PTSD. <laughs> all right. Well, we'll see what happens here. We got to get by the Canucks first. We got to actually make it all the way. I don't know. See what happens here. Vancouver, Miller, Patterson, Besser, Hoaglander, Horvat, Malgin, Bailey Rodriguez, Garland, Pearson, Galchenyuk. Oh, people still trying to rescue Galchenyuk and resurrect his career. And Nichushkin. Interesting, not bad, not great. Decent defensive core, and of course, Quinn Hughes. And Thatcher Demko and goal, along with Deep Dude, they have two solid goaltenders they can go to. I wonder who's going to play. I guess we'll find out. Yermo out with an injury. They got put, ooh, put Coles in bust. Oof. You don't like to see that. All right. Well, compare them to us here. They got the more elite players, I would say. But we're, we're starting to catch up. We're starting to get there. I'd say we're comparable. I'd say the depth is maybe where we have a slight, slight edge. But it's not that big. I mean, they seemingly have the top six advantage. We have a more balanced defensive core. We'll see if that means anything. And we'll see. The goalies are comparable. Aiden Hill did tremendous last season. We'll see if we can give him some more goal support this time. Or if we get the goal support and he falls apart. That seemed to be the case for us. One thing works, everything else breaks. We'll see what happens in this season in the midst of our retool. But a good mix of young and old players. Some guys in their prime. We'll see what happens. Game one. Home ice advantage versus Vancouver. We lose four to two. Okay, game two. Three to two win. All right, I like to see it. So, five goals in two games. Not great. And... We allowed six, so that's not a good ratio so far. We'll see if we could turn it around here on the road in one of the Rogers places. Uh, Ivani is out, so back in goes Griev. And we lose. Not able to keep that puck out of the net. All right. Can we even the series up? Game four? I don't... I... I'm thinking, like, I don't really have a lot of options. We don't have a flexible roster quite yet because of the coaching and, and stuff like that. So, we'll see. We'll see if we can pull out this win. Uh, we did, 5-3. to three, So, we are able to outscore some mistakes in that one. Even the series up in two games apiece. Game 5, pivotal. Uh, we win, 4-1. to one. Okay, and that was a good defensive performance. I like it. We have a chance to advance here in game 6. Can we do it on the road? Yes, we can. Two good defensive performances in a row right there. I like that. All right, good. Very, very good here as we take on the Oilers, who eliminated the Vegas in the first round. Taking on Connor McDavid, Leon Dreisaitl, and company. Eklund. Beautiful. Almost a goal per game. We were 3.5, 267. <laughs> Bad power play. So I don't know what's up with the power play. It's unable to get it going. Better penalty kill, though. Maybe, maybe I got to at least mess with that power play a bit. Maybe. We'll see. All right. Eklund with eight points. Tyron Acalo's point per game. Couture. Gaucher point per game, too. Bosses Ramirez with four. The Happy Bullen brother. <laughs> they produce so similarly. It's hilarious. They both got three points. Bjorkstrand only with two. That needs to improve. All right. Pellick at five points. Merkley with four. Middle and bottom pairing not great. But... Aiden Hill did good. He steps it up in the playoffs, man. Can't really deny it at this point. He seems to always do that. So that's good for us. But now we're taking on the Oilers before we look at their lines. I'm going to... You got it. We got to switch this around. It just has to happen. 
Maybe get him down here. Maybe if I keep Bjorkstrand here, I'll switch. Ah, uh, no one else can really play center, that's right. Uh, he only has two assists, which I really don't like. And Gaucher's doing good, so I can't really... Yeah, this is tough, unless I did that. But no, that's that's not good. I do still want the chemistry. Alright, well, maybe I'll leave it for now, see if they can sort of improve upon their own. Kind of almost don't want to break up that second line with how they're doing. Well, at least, actually, just Gaucher. What the fuck? What are you doing? There's no point. What the hell? I don't even know. <laughs> he's just got more points than everyone else. Maybe he's taking the playoffs into his own hands, man. Winning puck battles and doing the stuff. All right. Well, changed around the power play a little bit. Not a whole lot. But a little bit. I could do that and balance it. Put balls up there. Because Gaucher didn't actually have a point on the power play. We could do that. All right. Let's try something like that. Three and two for the chemistry. Still good enough. So let's try that out. Balance it a bit where we can have both units maybe being able to do something. All right. Well, let's see what the Oilers have to offer. So Dry Saddle, McDavid. Now they're playing them on the same line. They got Kravtsov with them. Hyman, Nuge, Milano, Zingle, Pitlick, Hathaway, Grinstrom, Drury, Moore. Okay. Nurse, <laughs> Sir Steve, top line. Only got one goal. Get good. Bouchard, Broberg, Shimmick, and Barry. And Blackwood in net, who is actually playing up to his abilities. Pretty scary. Pretty scary. All right. Let's see what happens here in round two. We barely have home ice advantage thanks to beating them out by one point, but this is a very good team. We'll see what happens. Game one. Two to one win, a defensive struggle that we come out on top. Love to see it. Good job. Aiden Hill, game two. Three to two win. Kind of the opposite of what you might have expected to see. But some more high scoring games, but we're getting the job done. Game three. Oh, Kenyazev goes out with injury. That is unfortunate. That's why we got Kenyazev, though. Hop in there, buddy. We win game three. What the hell? We are one win away. From advancing to the conference finals against the Oilers. Just do it. We're flying. Just just finish the job. Just finish the job in overtime. 4-3 to three win. And we, despite being ahead in the standings, you can't help but feel like that's a bit of an upset with their roster. McDavid, Drysaddle, good gracious. Noel Ivani's back. So, shove him back in. Can advance up a few more days here. I uh, don't care about scouting, man. We're in the playoffs. All right. So Winnipeg. Waiting for us in the conference finals. Eklund's still a point per game here in the playoffs. you love to see it. And uh, 3.4, 2.5. Power play did improve. And penalty killed. Hovering around that same mark. How about Winnipeg? They are... Ugh. They're finding ways to win, but on paper... Besides that penalty kill, we look like we could uh, maybe handle handle them. But you got to win those close games too. And winning close games is a big advantage in the playoffs. So Eklund, Couture, both with 11 points. Yeah, Couture has taught Eklund very well. Balser's 8, Gaucher 8, Bjorkstrand 7. Good. Wow, he had 5 goals in that series. Tabernacolo with 7. <laughs> this whole each have 6 points. They're fucking brothers. They are, absolutely are. This is hilarious. Uh, Ramirez, five points. Some of the depth not really doing a whole lot, but that's all right. Merkley has nine. Pellick with six. Oh yeah, we're getting we're getting everything we need to right now, and on top of good goaltending. I don't know, man. We might have a shot here, Winnipeg. Where I'm starting to kind of believe. I wasn't believing when I first started this, and uh, I mean when the season went the way it was, I'm like, all right, well, playoffs are a different beast, but here we are. Kyle Connor, Shifley, Ehlers. Veselainen, Perfetti, Timo. All right. So Timo coming back to haunt us. Dubois, Glass, Lowry, Dalcal, Pocket, and Simon. Or maybe Simone. Who knows? Uh, Morrissey and Zub. 
interesting. Vakaninen, Petri, Hanela, and Panet, Panay. Not Panay. He's not. He's not Filipino. Get out of here. But then they got Hellapuck. Hella, hella pucks. He's gonna stop hella pucks. Um, there he is. Not bad. Doing pretty good. They got Tuca as the backup. Alrighty. So again, I feel like we're comparably matched up. Maybe the third line. Eh, it's, yeah, this is a very, very comparable matchup. So it'll all come out in the wash here. We're gonna have home ice advantage once again. But can we beat Connor Hellebuck? That's the question. You know he's gonna steal the game. 5-4 victory, not that one. Big offensive showing for us. Game 2. 4-3 to three loss. All right, so now we're going to have, what, the, the offensive series? All right, even series going on to the road into no Wi-Fi arena. 3-2 to two victory, a 2-1 to one series lead, guaranteeing the split on the road. They can only tie this series up, and they do with another 4-3 to three victory. Every game has been a one-goal game, a pivotal Pivotal game five here. Who's going to take the advantage in this series? Kinyazev is back. Thank you, buddy. We need you. There he is. Oh, we lose five to one. Now we got to force a game seven. I'm going to trust this lineup. I feel we've been doing good enough here. I'm trusting this lineup. Whew, eight to five victory. Bit of a crazy offensive performance, but it gets the job done. Game seven has been forced back. On home ice, San Jose Sharks with a chance to advance to the Stanley Cup Finals. All right. Let's go, boys. Big game here. They don't get any bigger than this. We got the home ice crowd behind us. Get off to a good start, hopefully. But they're getting some early shots. Power play opportunity. Can't capitalize. We got a few shots on there. Even it up another power play. A five on three. You guys got to find a way to score. And that could come back to buy us not capitalizing on those opportunities here in the first period. As both goal to never mind, never mind. Killorn with 15 seconds left gets the opening goal, a huge goal from the depth. That was massive, massive boost heading into the locker room. Now we have the advantage. Second period, what a goal from the depth right there. That was huge. Let's go, guys. Can we cap? Can we add on to it? Can we add on to this? Yes, we can. Ramirez, the third line, gets going. And the depth is coming through. Two to nothing for San Jose. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. Oh, and Veselainen himself. He gets a late, uh, a late heartbreaker goal in the period with less than a minute left. What a wild game seven this is. Two to one going into the third. Come on, Sharks. Let's go. We need to shut this down. Get an insurance marker or two. But play your game. Got to kill this. Big kill right there. That's huge. Oh, but... Oh, <laughs> Timo Meyer ties the game. But Mario Ferraro not to be outdone. Oh, fuck off, Cole Perfetti. No! No! Pocket takes the lead. What an explosion there from Winnipeg. Oh, and Pocket gets... What the fuck? Pocket got a shorty. And the Winnipeg Jets... Oh, a four-goal third period, and they just all started by T.M. Meyer, of course. Of course. <laughs> and the Sharks fall apart in Game 7. Oh, T.M. <laughs> oh, a three-point game for T.M. in Game 7. Gets the first star in his old building. Oh, that hurts. But Pocket, those two goals are mad. A shorty? Are you kidding me? Ugh. What a, uh, a Sharks implosion right there. Vintage Sharks. Good God, just falling apart in the playoffs. Oh, my gosh. Merkley was phenomenal. And now I'm worried as shit about his contract. There's no way he doesn't get stack growth, right? God damn it. Ugh. That sucks. This is going to be tough. I, I can't really give him long term. He's RFA at least. That does give us a lot of negotiating power. I just don't want to set him up with too massive of a contract, you know. Remember Carlson. <laughs> Plus, he's going to be a stat growth kind of guy. And if he can't keep it up, you know. Oh, man. These contracts are going to be rough. Let's see what a four-year extension looks like. 
It's like eight. Ah, oh, man. This is rough. This is at least under eight for three years. I might, I might just want to lock him in. Because we don't really have any good options to replace him. So I'm going to lock him in. Free agency will be worse. So three years, 7.9. We'll deal with that. We're not making the mistake of another long-ass term crazy contract for a guy who's going to fall back to the mid-80s at some point. <laughs> oh, oh, good, great season, Merkley. Great playoffs as well. We just uh, fell apart in Game 7, and that hurts. That really, really hurts, but perhaps our youth kind of got exposed right there. Dude, Merkley led our entire team in points. What a beast. Went absolutely beast mode there. Just unfortunately wasn't enough. Unfortunately, it was not enough. And we fall. We fall in Game 7 of the Conference Finals. But you know what? We're still being competitive throughout this retool. And that's still good. We're getting a, uh, getting a feel for this team and how we can perform and maybe where we need to improve on. Power play has got to be something that we can we need to learn, figure out how to pick up. I think this combo was pretty good. So maybe look to something like that uh, for next season. So I hope you guys enjoyed it. Draft up in the next episode. Hit that like button. And I'll see you in the next one.